Wait, remember Kid vs. Cat? It was a Canadian cartoon about a kid who had to verse a cat on a daily basis while trying to expose the truth behind the cat's evil doings. It was... Cute. As a cat person, if you hand me a show that involves a cat, I'm pretty sold on watching it. That was the case with Kid vs. Cat, a show that I feel like I've heard the name of so many times but never actually got to see it on TV or even know about it at the time it was initially released. But since then, I have made sure I rectified that and decided to check out this series and see what it was all about. So if you enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe. Let's take a look at Kid vs. Cat. <laughs> Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new videos every single day from December 1st to December 25th. Hop aboard. Now, there are two types of people in the world. Ones that love cats and others that are wrong. Listen, when they go gremlin mode and plot various ways to attack you, that's all part of the fun. But when your name is Cooper Burtonberger and your new cat that your little sister brings home only has one goal in mind and that is to torture Coop's existence, well, maybe it's a bit understandable why he turns out to not be a cat person. The premise of the show is simple. There's a kid and there's a cat. And guess what? What? They verse each other. A basic episode would revolve around around the two clashing and butting heads as Coop tries to prove that the cat is evil, but the cat's whole goal is to get rid of any proof that Coop may have had, as well as being hateful to the human race. Literally, this little kitty is an evil villain wrapped inside the fuzzy body of a cat. Well, not fuzzy, that's a hairless cat, but the point still stands. It's something easy to understand and get behind. Each episode would obviously vary their situations, but it all still boils down to the same conflict and result. But did I mention that the cat in general is an alien? Yeah, if the eyes didn't give that away, the show establishes this cat as the alien agent from another planet filled with other alien cat looking creatures, and their planet is called Cat Nebula. It basically is like if you took Zib and Dib from Invader Zim and made them live in the same house. Done with flash animation, the show would pick up some worldwide attention thanks to its syndication deals and score really well with audiences who saw the original short pilot as it made its rounds through specific television events and festivals. Cooper, voiced by by Aaron Matthews, now has to deal with this new alien cat mastermind that his sister, both voiced by Kathleen Barr, and their father Bert, voiced by Trevor Duvall, are mostly oblivious to. Either not believing Coop in his accusations of the cat, or never getting the chance to see what's really happening thanks to the cat covering their tracks. But how did this show come to be? Well, let's take a look. Did you find my kitty? We sure did! Kid vs. Cat and Disney XD! Stop that racket! Kid vs. Cat was a two-season cartoon that had a total of 52 episodes. Created by Rob Baudelier, Rob already had a reputation for his ability to draw, so going into animation seemed like a no-brainer. But originally, this wasn't his direct passion. He wanted to create daily comic strips, but animation slowly took over his initial plans as he started storyboarding work for AKA Cartoon, being able to work on shows like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And from 2001 and on, he would work for Studio B, being a storyboard artist and supervisor for a majority majority of all of their projects. In 2003, Rob had already been married for some time, and his wife and him decided that they would get a hairless cat, which led to those who thought hairless cats were weird and always give Rob and his wife some funny reactions to the way the cat looked. Because of this relationship that hairless cats have in their relation to either evil villains or having a look that some would define as creepy, it gave Rob the thoughts of if his cat was evil, that it would try and attack him in some evil genius type of way, leading into the character ideas of a boy and a cat going at one another. While Rob's cat had never been evil and attacked him or anything like that, the idea was funny enough to spawn the base concept of the show, especially with in the look. As he put it, the hairless cat he had looked alien-like, leading to the cat in the show having very distinct alien-looking eyes, and, well, being an actual alien. In addition to that, he's had some form of idea about a kid who would defend his backyard sandbox from a neighborhood cat who would use it as a big old litter box since around 1996, mixing it up with the the 
slapstick and fast-paced chases of Looney Tunes and Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. Originally titled Look What My Sister Dragged In, Rob pitched the idea to Studio B's in-house development program, Beehive, who looked at what he had and gave it a green light for production to come up with a pilot. The pilot was first premiered at MIPCOM Jr., the International Market of Communications Programs, specifically for kids and family programming, back in 2006. A deal between Studio B and YTV was struck and development began on turning this pilot into a full-on show in January of 2008. Quickly, this would also turn into a syndication deal as DHX Media, now known as Wild Brain, purchased Studio B and sparked a deal with Disney, where the show, home video releases, and any related for sale product rights were given to them to distribute the property through JetX Europe, while DHX Media would use their own methods to take care of the rest of the world's distribution. But their work with Disney wasn't over just with that deal. A separate deal that involved Toon Disney's JetX block in the United States was also made, now covering the major territories for the show to reach as many eyes as possible. All of this was taken care of before the show would even fully premiere, which is nice to see the faith behind the show doing well and in hopes of having a pretty solid hit on their hands. Later in 2008, the show, now titled Kid vs. Cat, would officially premiere on October 25th on Canada's YTV during the channel's crunch block, but the US wouldn't see the show premiere until a couple months later on February 21st, 2009. By the end of 2009, the show would be renewed for a second season. It was currently airing all over the world in every major territory, with a new slew of new deals struck with other networks including more Disney XD channels around the world, Cartoon Network in South Korea, Nickelodeon in Southwest Asia, VRAC in Canada, Canada, ABC in Australia, ECTV in Ecuador, as well as TV Azteca in Mexico. The show was going global. The show itself was surprisingly a fun little show that doesn't have too much consequence for tuning in as you please. There is no real big storyline that you have to follow, just a kid trying to expose his cat for being an evil alien. Pretty simple, but it's within the structure that the animation and various battles the kid and the cat have that make the show an enjoyable watch. It feels so small scope, and that's why I think it works so well. It's not interested in forming this larger than life narrative, it instead grounds itself as much as possible that a cartoon with slapstick humor can to reality, only adding in one fantastical element of an alien cat. It's the kind of stuff that reminds me of doodling on my work at school and coming up with these fantastical situations to escape the mundane. While I don't think you'd take a lot away from watching the show, I feel that not every cartoon or show has to give you anything more than being entertaining. And for this show, I was entertained. The color palette used in the show creates a nice blend of relaxation. It's never too explosive with it, just like the premise. It chose to remain simple, yet effective to craft a comfortable and welcoming feeling. Plus, it toes the line of who can enjoy the show very well, specifically speaking towards those who do and do not like cats. If you like cats, which is the correct choice, then you have a fun cat-based cartoon show. If you don't like cats, then you get to see an evil cat be evil and root for the kid just trying to prove he isn't going crazy. It feels homegrown, from concept to execution, from someone with passion for their work that just wanted to fully realize their ideas they've been having for over a decade. I think that while I wouldn't rank this show as an incredible, unforgettable show, I do think it was a good and enjoyable time to go through. It's a breezy two seasons that are sure to make you laugh and leave you smiling by the end of it. But as far as for how the show came to an end and for what's next, let's see what happened. Maybe it's time we took Mr. Cat to the vet. Hola, soy Coop, the kid versus cat. <laughs> After the second season of the show, and with all of the syndication deals that brought the show global, Kid vs. Cat would officially come to an end, where Rob announced that the show wasn't going to continue for a third season, as well as he wouldn't have the rights to produce more episodes of the show himself. Considering how deep the syndication went, I can totally see why it wouldn't be as simple as handing the rights back to the creator of the show, unfortunately. But it wasn't cancelled. It simply just didn't have plans for a third season, leaving it open for the show to return if there was a want for it from either fans demanding it so, or the owners of the franchise wanting to invest more time into the series. But in the end, there is a happy story for Rob, as he had always had this lifelong love for Peanuts cartoons, and had a dream of being like the creator of the Peanuts, Charles Schulz. And lo and behold, he would eventually become one of the sole developers and directors for the Apple TV Plus exclusive Peanuts show, The Snoopy Show. Life just works out funny that way sometimes, and I'm very happy that Rob, while initially not having an interest specifically in making animation, 
found a long career in the field that has, in a way, brought him back closer to full circle in working on the property that Charles Schulz created. And funny enough, like I mentioned, DX Media would become Wild Brain. Well, Wild Brain is producing the Snoopy show, so it's nice to see things are going well and there wasn't any bad blood after Kid vs. Cat had come to an end after two seasons. And who knows, with how active Wild Brain is online with publishing their back catalog of cartoons on their own YouTube channels, who's to say that one day this show doesn't come back, or go the way of Slug Terra and start releasing continuations of the series through short three to five minute cartoon segments on YouTube. Again, the show technically wasn't cancelled, so there is a decent sized crack in the door for anything to one day happen. In the end, Kid vs. Cat is this fun little show that while feeling a bit repetitive in concept, still had a lot of fun moments, seeing the different shenanigans that Coop would have to navigate through thanks to his evil cat was a fun time. It's nothing that will blow you away in scope or character development, but it's a nice push away from the shows and cartoons that do. It felt like a nice little refresh where I can just turn on the show when I was comfortable in knowing that it would just be what it was at surface level. I know there was a solid fan base out there for the show, heck they're the ones who brought my attention towards the show and it was a good time. So if you're looking for something that you can just throw on whenever, Kid vs. Cat is a nice choice where you can get some fun slapstick comedy that you can feel the influences of slapstick Looney Tunes-esque shows of the past. If you ever watch or have ever watched Kid vs. Cat, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the series. Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe, later.